First, let me just comment on the underlining bill, and I will ask unanimous consent to put aside an amendment so I can offer an amendment. First, let me comment on the underlining bill. We need to give President Obama the tools necessary for our economic recovery. President Obama said two weeks ago in his inaugural address, the challenges we face are real, they are serious, and they are many. They will not be met easily or in the short span of time, but they will be met. And I think our responsibility is to make sure that he has the tools necessary in order to be able to deal with our economic crisis. The current status of our economy is worse than any of us have seen in our lifetime. The gross national product fell 4% in the final quarter of 2008. Our unemployment rates are at 7.2%. Uh, in regards to home ownership and foreclosure, I know my Republican colleagues had some discussion about trying to do more in that regard. This bill will save homeowners their homes. In my state of Maryland, we've had 41,500 foreclosures in 2008, an increase of 71 percent. Now, I need to point out, Mr. Pre Madam President, that last year it was the Senate Republicans that required seven cloture votes on the Foreclosure Prevention Act before we could take it up. Uh, at that time, 8,500 families were in some stage of foreclosure every day. The five-month stalling cost 1.2 million families to receive some form of foreclosure filings. The Republicans blocked amendments to provide additional funding for housing counseling and to let bankruptcy judge modify terms of subprime mortgages, which could have kept 600,000 families in their homes. So let me make it clear. We all want to preserve home ownership. We all want to prevent foreclosure. The underlining bill will help us get to that moment. But we should have done more earlier, and I regret that the filibusters prevented us from doing that. Now, it's not just home ownership. People are losing their jobs. Retailers, from automobile dealers to restaurants, are feeling the pinch. Small business owners are closing their doors. We need jobs, and we need consumer confidence. The underlining legislation will allow for job growth. That's the number one objective. Create more jobs in America, because we're losing them today. President Obama made it clear the criteria for this bill must be that the investments we make must be targeted to new job growth. He does that through targeted tax credits and tax cuts, through aid to our local governments to avoid the layoffs that each one of our states will confront with state workers. I know my state of Maryland, Governor Malley, is having a very difficult time with the state budget. He knows that we need help in order to preserve state employment and to preserve the type of services that the state must provide for essential services during a recession. And this legislation provides direct investment for projects that are ready to go that will create jobs. But they're the right investments for America's future. And I, I, I don't disagree with my colleagues as we look at each individual request that is made here. There are no earmarks in this legislation. But we want to make sure that the right investments for America's future, whether it's improving education, educational facilities, energy so we can become energy independent, broadband so that we can compete in the future, health care technology so we can become more efficient in the way we deliver health care, our transportation system. I particularly mentioned public transportation, which is critically important for our communities, or whether it's preserving home ownership. And the underlining bill must be temporary. We need to get back to balancing the budget. We understand that. So what does this bill mean for the people of Maryland? Well, our state will receive directly $3.1 billion. We will receive $420 million for highways, $240 million for transit projects, $27 million for drinking water improvements, $96 million to improve wastewater facility plants, which is in desperate need in Maryland. State energy program will get $8.5 million. Weatherization assistance so that homeowners can have their homes much more efficient as it relates to the use of energy. $56.5 million. Many of the infrastructures that are being improved by this bill are 30, 40, 50 years old. A lot of our wastewater treatment facilities need modernization. They're ready to go. The money hasn't been there for it. These are capital improvements so that we can compete and have a better society. 
Once it's done, we can get back to being more competitive and get back to the budget discipline that is so necessary uh, in this Congress. Let me talk for a moment about the real estate market. The real estate market triggered this recession. We know that. I was listening to my colleagues talk about that on the floor, and I agree with them. It's difficult for people to get into the mood to buy a home. They don't know whether we've hit bottom or not. So I particularly want to appreciate, appreciate the Finance Committee for bringing out in this legislation the first-time homeowners tax credits, legislation that I introduced last Congress. It was included in the bill we passed in the last Congress, but it was a non-interest-bearing loan of $7,500. The Finance Committee has now changed that to a credit, which I think will be much more effective. First-time home buyers now know that if they get, get into the home buying market, the federal government's going to help them with a credit. That's what it should be, and I know there will be some additional efforts made to strengthen uh, that amendment. In regards to small business, I, I said earlier, small businesses are, are the heart of America. It's where economic strength is. Uh, the American dream is not only owning a home, the American dream is also owning a small business being your own boss. Unfortunately, too many small businesses today have on their front door going out of business. We've got to do more to protect small businesses. At the end of the day, when we pull out of this recession, we need to have small businesses in place because they're the economic engine of America. 99.7% of the businesses of Maryland are small businesses. 60 to 80% of all new job growth are created by small businesses. We uh, had in the Small Business Committee a roundtable where we talked to small businesses in our state. It's interesting, in our country, it's interesting a year ago, one out of every seven small business owners used their personal credit cards in order to get credit for their business. We understand that. Today, that's 50%. It's the only place they can get credit. It's the most expensive, and it can be pulled at any time. We've got to help small business owners with their, their credit problems. We have to make sure that the government procurement actually gets down to uh, uh, the small business owner. In this underlining legislation, the SBA loans, the 504 program, the 7A loans, there are major provisions here to make it less expensive for small businesses. That's good. I support that. There's a micro-borrowing provision in this legislation for small businesses. That's important. That's going to help. But we need to do more. We need to do more to help small businesses, minority businesses, women-owned businesses, veterans' businesses. And for that reason, um, Madam President, I'm going to ask unanimous consent to set aside the uh, pending amendment so I can offer amendment number 237. Madam President, let me just very, very briefly explain this amendment. This amendment uh, improves the SBA program for surety bonds for small businesses. In the underlining bill, the committee has brought out an additional $15 million that will allow SBA to help with the, the shorty program. The challenge today is that for a small business to get a government contract of over $100,000, they have to put up a shorty bond. It is very difficult for them to get that shorty bond. The SBA has a program to help them obtain a shorty bond. The challenge is that the current limit is $2 million. Any contract over $2 million, the program cannot be used. Well, with the underlining bill and the types of procurement that we are anticipating, there are going to be larger contracts. And what this amendment does is increase the $2 million to $5 million. Secondly, in order to qualify uh, for a small business, your annual revenue must be below the federal guidelines or state guidelines, if it's a state contract. What this underlining amendment does is use the federal guidelines, which is $31 million for construction contractors, businesses, and $13 million for specific trades as the standard for being eligible for the federal SBA uh, program on your surety bond. I am very pleased that this amendment has the support of the leadership of the Small Business Committee, Senator Landro and Senator Snow. It's bipartisan. And for my colleague, let me tell you, the Congressional Budget Office has scored this at no cost, so it's not an amendment that will cost money, and I would urge my colleagues to support it. And then just lastly, let me point out that Senator Snow will be offering an amendment to make sure that federal procurement laws and regulations apply to all the contracts awarded under the, this legislation and that SBA regularly report on these contracts to Congress. I, I'm a co-sponsor of that amendment. I strongly support that amendment. And I hope we will also consider that amendment. Madam President, in conclusion, 
I'm optimistic about our future, but we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we need to, to pass this legislation quickly. We need to give President Obama the tools he needs so that we can uh, see our economy be rebuilt and grow uh, to its full capacity. I am confident we will reach that day by acting on this legislation.